Hey, what's going on guys? This is going to be another programming terms video. And in this video, we're going to take a look at dry. And dry is something that stands for don't repeat yourself. Now, this is something that you are probably going to hear a lot if you're just getting started out in programming or maybe you just got a job in, in, in computer science. Um, you know, maybe your boss comes up and says, hey, our code base is a mess, and the first thing I want you to do is to make this code dry. So if he tells you that, what that means is don't repeat yourself. And if we take a look at Wikipedia, uh, what they have on there is it says, a principle of software development aimed at reducing repetition of information of all kinds. Okay, so what exactly do they mean about this? Um, I have this little sample project here. This is in Python, but uh, this dry concept spans all languages, uh, so you know, don't get tied into just what the language is doing. Um, so anyways here, we have uh, some code that has a home page, an about page, and a contact page. And if I print this out, you can see that um, it prints out this HTML here, it prints out a header, then it prints out this paragraph here that says, welcome to our home page. Then it prints out a footer um, with these footer links. Um, but if you look here, we have all of this header information uh, in the home page, all of it in the about page, all of it in the contact page. So this is being repeated over and over and over. And that's what people mean whenever they say they want you to make the code dry. They don't want that code to be repeated like that because it makes it hard to maintain it. Uh, so say that your boss came up and he said, hey, I don't want this to, uh, or I want to add a link into the header. Um, so you'd have to come in here and you would have to manually add uh, a link into every one of these header sections, um, which it would be a lot nicer if that was all in one place. So what would it look like if we tried to make this code dry? Um, so first of all, let's, uh, you may see here that we want to print out, um, so we have headers being printed out and footers. So maybe we should just pull these out into their own sections here. So I can do um, a function to print out a header and I'll just pass that for now and then I'll do a footer here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and copy these sections in and place them within these functions. So now I have this in one central location. Um, and then we'll go through and we'll replace all of the repeated code with this one function. So these are all the headers here. And then I'll go through and do all the footers. So now that I've replaced all this code, uh, if we go in here, you can see that this is all cleaned up nice and neat now to where it's a lot easier to read than it was before. We can see that this is the header and then we want to print out this home page paragraph. Uh, this is the header to this page and we want to print out this about page paragraph. It's so much easier to read and not only that, but if we want to make a change, we only have to make that change in one spot. Um, now actually we could even um, make this more dry because you can see that we're per, uh, that we are repeating these menus here. Um, so if we wanted to, we could even come out here and do, um, you know, a, a nav menu function that printed out these as well. Then I could go through here and um, change these nav menus out with this simple function here. And now all that is located in one place. Now it is possible to get carried away with this. Um, at, you know, and just in this example, you can see that we probably got a lot bigger benefit for doing our headers and our footers than we did for uh, just doing this little nav menu, which is only um, repeated one time. So if something's only repeated once or twice here and there, then the benefit the, then the benefit may not be that large. But whenever you have something that is just file after file being repeated, then it's usually nice to put that in one central location so that you don't repeat yourself and that you can maintain that code in one place. Now, just to show that that worked, let me go ahead and run this code here. And you can see that everything pulled out into these functions, it still works as planned. I'm printing out the home page down here and we still get our header and our paragraph and our footer section there as well. 
Now let me show you a more practical example of where you might see something like this. Um, so I have this file here called calc.py. It's a Python file that just has really simple functions, add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Now what if I was to write unit tests for this? Um, so here's a test underscore calc.py. If you don't know what unit testing is, don't worry about it. We're just focusing on um, the dry principle right now. Um, but anyways, uh, say that we wanted to test this code and we want to test the addition, the subtraction, uh, multiplication, and divide. Now you can see when we're testing this code, at every test we're doing num1 equals 10, num2 equals 5. And then, you know, we're testing to make sure that those numbers add and subtract um, accordingly. Um, but you can see that every test we have to uh, put in what these numbers are equal to. Um, so the Python unit testing actually tries to take care of this for you. They have a method called setup that runs before every test. So if you're doing something like this, where you have the same values that you're setting up for every test, then you know just put it into a setup function and it makes your code more dry. And then you don't even have to uh, put that function there. It's part of the framework. So I can just take those out and I'll go through here and remove these. And now that those are removed, you can see that the code is a lot more clean. It's a lot easier to see what's going on. And if I want to change some of these values uh, you know, to different values, now I can do it in one spot. Now, in order to get this to work right for Python, uh, technically I'd have to come in here and uh, add self.num1 to all of these and then go through and change these in every location where there's uh, num1. Um, but you know, that's not the, uh, what I was trying to get across. I'm just trying to get across that it's easy to uh, pull out this information and put it in one central location so that uh, one, it's not repeated, and two, it's a lot easier to maintain. Now real quick, I went through and went ahead and changed these values, and you can see after I change them, if I run this code, you can see that it ran all four tests uh, with no problems. So this setup method is working correctly with setting up these values before each individual test. So that is a quick overview of what it means for your code to be dry. So now if you hear somebody saying it, or if maybe your boss comes up and asks you to, uh, to make the code base more dry, uh, then you'll understand what they mean instead of... Uh, just the um, definition that's here on Wikipedia, maybe now you'll have a better idea of what it actually means to uh, put those values into central locations and, and to not repeat yourself. So hopefully this video was useful for you guys. You know, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask in the comment section below. Uh, be sure to subscribe for future programming term videos, and thank you guys for watching.